Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. One of my favorite aspects of breeding boas are the holdbacks, and it's always great to select which animals you want to keep from your litter that you're going to grow up and they're going to represent the next generation of your breeding projects. Today I want to share with you some of the beautiful holdbacks that I've been growing up the last few years. These guys are not uh, going into breeding real soon, but they're at least a year or two old. I'm going to show you guys animals born from around 2020 to around 2022 and uh, you know they're starting to show some really nice colors and put on a little bit of size and it just give, gives me an idea about what exactly they're going to look at look like as adults and so first I thought I'd grab this one this is a 2022 born Coops Pastel Colombian boa this is a selectively bred line of pure Colombian boas that have been selected for their beautiful orange red coloration. You can see how gorgeous this female is. This is a project started by Silvio Coops in Europe and then continued by Vin Russo. You know, with every generation, they seem to be getting a little bit more colorful. Uh, so my adults from Vin um, bred for me the first time in 2022, which generated the litter that this female came from. Uh, beautiful animal. I also, in, in addition to the beautiful orange coloration, they have these gorgeous silvery eyes that just really stand out and um, just a really great animal to keep. Not just because it's gorgeous to look at, but they're really docile, really handleable. As I've mentioned many times before, the pure Colombians are probably the best all-around pet boa and these guys are no exception. I actually have my breeders paired up right now, so with any luck, We'll get another boat litter of Coops Pastel sometime this summer, so stay tuned for that. And I hope to be able to offer more of these gorgeous orange animals to people that want them. Another reddish pastel looking boa is this Super Moran Jungle Female, also born here in 2022. And I've been attracted to the Moran gene for quite some time. It's an incomplete dominant form of pastel. One of the reasons is when you have two copies of the Moran gene, you get what's known as a super Moran, and you get this more intense red coloration. And very few super Morans have been produced, probably in the single digits. You know, there's just a few pictures of them online, so I was really, really excited to potentially produce a super Moran and I paired up two Moran animals back in 2022 and had a small litter and just got one animal that's super Moran which is this female and she's also jungle as well you can see the jungly looking pattern on this female but just an amazing looking animal you know definitely what I would classify as living art or a designer boa and uh, she's been doing real well putting on some size She's now eating jumbo mice. You can probably move her up to small rats pretty soon. One thing about Moran is that there's not that much known about the super phenotype, and many super phenotypes are not healthy animals. And there's a lot of speculation online that the super Moran is not a fertile animal and you can't breed them. Although I think it possibly it's just because there's so few of them that have been produced, none of them have reproduced successfully at this point. It seems like Moran was really popular when it first came out around 15 years ago, and then it kind of faded from view after that. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen with this female. I've even seen some people claiming that Super Moran is lethal and the animals don't survive, like some of the others, like Super Motley. I can tell you though, based on this animal, that's not the case and she's doing great and putting on size, uh, developing no differently than my non-Super Moran boas. Whether or not she'll reproduce, I can't say. Um, it's possible that maybe the males are incapable of reproducing, but the females are, or vice versa. Um, you know, since I just have this one Super Moran, I'm going to have to wait and see and, you know, hopefully in another maybe three years or so, three to four years, she'll be ready to breed and, we'll, you know, we'll see what happens. But I'm just enjoying watching this girl develop and grow and I consider myself uh, quite lucky to have a Super Moran in my collection since they're so uh -huh, rare and hard to get. Next we have a dark boa. This is a 2021 born boa constrictor or boa imperator longicata also known as the long tail boa or the tombs boa and this guy's doing great putting on some size as you can see he's getting his adult coloration getting a lot darker 
What's unique about these animals is they undergo a metamorphosis where they start out quite light as babies and then they gradually get more dark pigment with every shed until as adults they're much darker. And you can see how dark this guy is. It's not going to get too, too much darker as an adult. And uh, this is from uh, Eugene Bissett's bloodline. I've actually got his parents paired up again this year. The male and the female from my, the Bissett bloodline. So with any luck, we'll have some full siblings available to this guy. And uh, the Longicata, they're not quite as well known as some of the other types of boas, but they're a great species to keep and work with. If you want something that's not too big, but isn't quite a dwarf, they get to about five or six feet. Beautiful colors, beautiful dark coloration, calm and easy to handle. Just a great all around pet boa the Longicata. And these guys have a dedicated cult-like following that really, really loves them and works with nothing else. But for the general pet keeper, they're not really all that well known. Seems like they kind of go in and out of popularity as well, but they definitely deserve the popularity. If you're looking for something a little bit different, the Longicata or long tail boa. Next, a few true red tail holdbacks. Thought I'd start with this beautiful Pocalpa Provian, born here in 2022. And this female is doing great. You can see she's already getting her beautiful golden orange or golden yellow coloration. These Peruvians are some of the larger red tails. They start out really big as babies, definitely bigger than the Surinams. And then they seem to grow a little bit faster. This one's about three feet long or so. She's about a year and a half, uh, but just doing well. I still have her in a, my uh, large baby rack, which is kind of my grow out rack with the 28 quart tubs. She'll probably move up to probably a four foot cage pretty soon here. She's getting bigger and uh, just doing great. And hopefully should have some more Peruvians this year. I've got some pairings right now, but we'll just have to see. The Peruvians have been a little more challenging for me to breed consistently compared to the Surinams and some other types of red tails, but fingers crossed for some more of these golden beauties coming this summer. Next, a beautiful Suriname born here in 2021 from my Prometheus bloodline. This guy I call Pink Floyd because of his beautiful pink coloration. And this guy was definitely the holdout of the litter. He just had this lighter pinker color than the others. And I pretty quickly decided I wanted to hold this guy back for the next generation of breeders. This guy's doing great. He's uh, a little bit bigger than the Peruvian I just showed you. This is one of my faster growing Surinams actually. You know, some of the animals from this line tend to grow faster than some of my other bloodlines. And this guy's doing great and he's actually eating medium sized rats at this point. Um, he'll probably be ready to breed in another couple years. The males don't have to be quite as old as the females. But just a great animal, real docile to handle. Beautiful looking example of a top shelf, true red tail boa. You know, you just can't beat animals from this bloodline if you want, uh, you know, the best in red tail boas. Thought I'd show you one more holdback Suriname. This is actually a 2020 animal. This guy's a year older than the male I just showed you. You can see he's no bigger. And this guy has always just grown a little bit more slowly and he started off a little smaller as a baby. This guy's from my Picasso bloodline, which tends to not grow quite as fast. Although this guy, of the holdbacks from this bloodline, this guy grew even slower than most of them. And the reason why I brought this out is just to illustrate every animal is different. They all grow at different rates. Okay, you shouldn't be obsessed about the size of your boa or think it should be exactly a certain size at a certain age. Let them grow naturally. You know, feed them responsibly. Don't feed too much, but feed enough. And I bring this up because recently I've seen some comments about me on social media. Someone accused me of slow growing my snakes and stunting them and not giving them enough food. And I can assure you that is not accurate. I feed my animals enough for optimal growth. In fact, I've even fed them um, at sometimes in the past where they started to get a little bit chunky and I slowed down the feeding because of it. You know, not surprising, I've had other people accuse me of power feeding my animals. So you really can't win here. Um, ultimately, you want your animals to grow slow but steady. You want them to put on 
growth from about six inches to about 18 inches a year. You don't want them to get too chunky, but you want them to be nice and muscular. And there's not really a set formula for this. You have to look at the animal and feed them accordingly. Uh, but just don't obsess about the size of your bow. I've, I've done like probably like a third of the videos I've ever done have been like on this topic. And yet people still don't get it. And I, I don't understand. Okay. Feed your boas responsibly. Don't power feed them. And don't slow grow them either. One more true red tail holdback. This is a Venezuelan female. Who was born here in 2022. And this animal is just amazing. The coloration you can see beautiful golden color and starting to get this beautiful peach orange sides just a amazing animal you know i've posted pictures of this one and people have accused me of photoshopping and adding the color but i can assure you this isn't photoshop this is her natural color she's just a very very colorful animal and this female was born in 2022 from a bloodline of Venezuelans established by Terry Cullen that originated in the village of Tamatama or Tamatama, depending on how you want to pronounce it, uh, which is in southern Venezuela at the confluences of the Orinoco and Casacuare rivers. And uh, just an amazing looking animal, this Tam Tamatama female Venezuelan. I'm attempting the same pairing this year with my adult Tamatama boas, and we'll see. Um, I actually, I had another pairing last year for my other bloodline of Venezuelans, the Rio Bravo bloodline, which didn't pan out. But hopefully this year we'll get some of these beautiful Tamatama Venezuelan boas. Uh, keep my fingers crossed, but uh, amazing looking red tail. If you're looking for something different from the Surinams, Guianas, and Peruvians that are more commonly available. One more holdback. This is a dwarf boa. This is a 2022 born Cocker Key dwarf boa from a small island called Cocker Key off the coast of Belize. And this is the first time I bred these in 2022. I have one pair. And um, I actually got the pair from someone that was getting out of reptiles and needed a home for them. and. Um, originally I was not planning on getting the Cocker Keys because I have the Qual Keys which are from a nearby island and in my mind I kind of equated them as being very similar they're just these gray island boas from Belize um, but I actually got the Qual Cocker Keys you know five or six years ago really happy that I did because I can really appreciate more of the differences having kept both the Cocker and the Quals the Cockers are definitely darker overall they have more of a regular pattern of saddles, and um, they're also a little more robust and thick and muscular, whereas the crawls are a little lighter in color with more aberrancies in the pattern, and you know not quite as thick and muscular. And I really like these cockers. This is a female that I held back. You can see she's uh, now uh, you know going on two years old, still quite small. They get up to around four or five feet long. You know, great dwarf boa if you're looking for something that doesn't get quite so big, but has a lot of the large boa behaviors. Great to handle. They love to wrap. You know, they, you can feel the muscles, but being that they're kind of small, they're not going to really cut up the circulation or anything. You know, definitely a boa that I enjoy taking out and handling. Um, you know, they're also going to kind of chill out. They're not going to kind of try to take off like some of the more active types of boa. But I can't over recommend these cocker key boas and I have my pair my adults paired up this year so fingers crossed I'll have another litter of cocker keys sometime this summer anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed looking at these holdback boas I'd like to hear in the comments which one is your favorite so please comment below with any questions you might have as well and enjoy your boas